guys, Megan Ingley here, joined by Stephen Reinpact. He is the development coach. Is it like a development skills coach that is your role? Um, it's kind of more encompassing than that. It's skills, it's attitude, it's um, just everything that involves a player with his growth in hockey and in life. Okay, I'm definitely going to ask you to expand on that a little bit then. Okay. Just looking at someone like Sean Allaire, who was the skills coach up with the Avs, as yeah. a development skills coach, can you tell me a little bit about how these roles compare or differ in what you do? Um, well, the skills coach, like what Sean was doing, you're more on ice, you're focusing on the stick handling or the skating or your agility. Um, myself and Brian Wilsey, we are more like, you know, we'll go watch them play, then we'll ask them how they're doing in school, help them with things with hockey or in life in general. So. We're kind of the conduit between the player and the team, and we're also helping them on the ice with skills. So we, we do skill stuff, but we also are more than that. It's definitely a lot more than that, because what I've seen from you is those skills days up in Loveland yep. with all of the staff, development staff, yep. Eagle staff out there working with players. And I just wanted to hear a little bit more about those development days. Sure. Have you guys always done that? Yeah, so we've been doing that for, I want to say about three or four years. And it's a great way to um, just kind of break up their routine of just practice, 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 and then a couple games on the weekend. So we are able to work on some of the, the details and techniques in the game and whether it's just, you know, blue line, the, the D work on their blue line lateral movement or forwards working on retrievals. Um, we're able to kind of just pick a couple different skill sets that happen in games a lot and try to perfect it for them. About how often do you guys do those? Um, it's all schedule depending. Um, you know, if they have a, you know, a run where they only play on the weekends. We call it a college week because they'll practice all week and then play on the weekend. They have a few of those. <clears throat> then we try to incorporate a de development day to break up that monotony and also to work on some skills. So we try to do about four to five of those a year. Have you ever gotten feedback from the players about how helpful that is for them? Yeah, they actually, they, there's lots of feedback and they love it because A, they're able to work on things, but it's also, um, it breaks up the routine, right? Yeah. It's something different. And then we always end it on with like a two-on-two -two game or something. So it's a fun day. Like they, they really enjoy it. And I've only seen it with Eagles and Loveland, but I was wondering, do you travel to do things like that with guys in Utah or some of the college players? Uh, we do go to Utah um, occasionally. College players we are not allowed to go on the ice with during the year. But players in Major Junior, we can. So when we go up there to watch a player, we'll take our skates and we'll go on the ice with them and, and work work with them a little bit before after practice. But NCAA rules, won't let us go on the ice with the college players. So we'll, we'll go and we'll sit and talk with them and their coaches, but um, that's the extent of our, you know, contact with them while they're in college. And those players in college, when they come for development camp, do you work on them really closely then because you do have that chance to get on the ice? Yeah, absolutely. It's, gra it's great to have that ability to be on the ice with them because it is such a small window to be able to be on the ice with them. Right. Um, we really look forward to that. and. We work with them. I, I like to think we give everybody the same amount of attention, um, but it's just great to have them there on the ice and being able to, to work with them. And how do you navigate the different skill levels and the players that you're working with? You have guys with pro experience, players in college. Do you change your approach in how you um, reach these players at times? Um, maybe a little bit, but really with the different skill levels, they're all kind of learning it. Some might be just better at it, so you're still working with them to get even better than they are. Yeah. And the ones who are learning it, you're trying to give them repetitions to perfect it and get better at it. So a lot of times you're working on the same stuff, but there's just different levels of execution maybe. And you mentioned staying in contact with players and maybe yeah. helping with the mental side of the game. I was curious a little bit more about what that looks like throughout the course of the season. Um, yeah, we just kind of, you know, we follow, we'll go, our prospects in college, we'll go watch them play and we'll, talk with them after the games, uh, talk with their coaches, and we just kind of follow their progress and just, you know, if there's any issues that arise on the ice or off the ice from them or for us, we have we have a, you know, relationship. We're able to, you know, navigate that, whatever it may be. But we, uh, yeah, we stay in touch with everybody on a regular basis. And in following players, is part of your job to assess areas of improvement or is it a collaborative thing? You're talking with their college coaches or you're talking with their coaches, the Colorado Eagles. Yep, you're talking to everybody. You're gathering as much information as possible. Like what, what I see when I'm with him and talk to him is only one snapshot of you know his life really, but like his coaches will have a different view, his friends might, his parents might. So we, uh, we talk to everybody and we get the, you know, the most encompassing picture we can. 
and these will be the last couple ones. You've worked sure. with Schneekloff for a while now yep. in doing this. What are some qualities you're most looking forward to seeing in him as the head coach now that will be especially useful for the development of players? Um, I think he's a great communicator and his knowledge of the game is, is, is really high. And he's been under Crow now for whatever, six years, and he learned a lot from Crow. And it's great to see Schneeks get this opportunity because he deserves it and he's going to be really good at it. And he's got a lot to offer uh, the players, both with his knowledge and, you know, just his attitude. He's a great person. And this puts you on the spot a little bit, but I was wondering who the easiest player you've worked with so far has been. Oh. I'm sure there's a lot of really good You know what? They're, 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 yeah, they're all good guys and they all want to learn. So I can't say there's been, you know, an easiest or like a most difficult. They're all good guys. It's just a lot of fun to work with. And it's really rewarding to see it when they make the NHL. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yep. I appreciate it. No problem.